Happy Football Friday, Big Sills National Football Show. Pull up a chair. Watch this on your phone, your laptop, desktop, anything you need when it comes to getting Big Sills here in each and every single day here at 3 to 6 Eastern Time. God, there are so many storylines heading into this weekend. I mean it. We're now starting to see the NFL take shape on who the pretenders and the contenders are going to be. We're starting to see that. By the way, is it the NFL every week? I mean, it's it, you really don't know what to expect. I was just talking to Xander. He goes, Sills, you think we're going to win this week, right? He goes, the Colts aren't that good. I go, you obviously must think Washington's great. He's like, no. That's what makes the NFL the best league in American sports. You really don't know what every week is going to unravel. You, you just don't. We're going to get into it here, and we're going to get into that game. I'm going to tell you some telling things here, what I think I'm going to see going into this game. I think the Adami and Sue move, I think that really energized the building. I think when you think about coming off that loss, I think that's going to be a massive positive, as I said yesterday. It's been a great 24 hours for the Eagles. It's been a great 24 hours. We're going to talk a little bit how to use Sue. We're going to talk whether they should play him this weekend. I still want to start it out with this, though. I think you saw the best coach in the National Football League last night, Mike Vrabel. You think that guy misses A.J. Brown? They bitch slapped Green Bay last night. That's going to be a hell of a football game between Tennessee and the Eagles. <laughs> Derrick Henry's, that guy's a real deal, man. And if you can't stop the run, that guy's going to run you. Ryan Tannehill had 330 yards last night. They made Aaron Rodgers look terrible. That was the worst game I've seen Aaron Rodgers play in maybe seven years. I'm telling you, man. Tennessee's now 7-3 and three again. There they are. Mike Vrabel coaching his guys up. And there they are winning again. He's the most underrated coach in the National Football League. That guy's a whale of a coach. I love Mike Vrabel. I do, man. That guy can coach. Okay? Yeah. Eagles are going to shut down. You couldn't shut down. Some dude named Robinson in Washington. We're going up to the big boy pants now when we're talking Derrick Henry. Oh, the kids you got this weekend. Before you start saying you're going to shut down Derrick Henry, you better shut down Jonathan Taylor. Oh, we got this, Sills. All right. Let's get into that. Here's how I see this playing out. I've always said this to people. Um, don't let one loss cost you two. I don't believe they're thinking about Washington. Short-term memory loss. I completely think that this football team is over it. By the way, Seth Joyner will join us in the third hour at 5.30 Eastern. You can always catch him on our post-game show, our pre-game show. The legendary Eagle. We're going to talk some defense with Seth Joyner at 5.30 Eastern time today. We'll get his take on what he sees for this Colts game. So we will have Seth, 5.30 Eastern time. Can't wait to talk some ball with him. It's always an education listening to Seth Joyner when he talks some football. Here's how I see this Colts game playing out. Um... You're going to get a massive dose of Jonathan Taylor. Last week, 22 carries, 147 versus the Las Vegas Raiders. Heavy dose. Heavy dose. And I'm going to make a proclamation here on you. Okay? I think you're going to know if this game is close after the first quarter. If they're in it, by the end of the first quarter, 
this is going to be a long game. I I don't think so. Okay? I, I don't think so. See, Washington has kind of skewed some of my thoughts on the Eagle front seven because they blew them up. But I think we're going to know immediately, first quarter, how this game is being played out, okay? I think we're going to know. If this thing is close going into the second quarter, this could be a long day again like it was in Washington because there's a formula now to follow. That doesn't mean you can implement it, okay? That doesn't mean you can implement it. But there's going to be a formula that they're going to try to follow. Third and short, keep Jalen in that offense. Hey, remember what Washington did. They held you to like 47 plays this past week. I mean, that was a big-time performance by them, holding you under 60 plays like that. Indianapolis has to do the very same thing. I think you're going to see a ton of carries by Jonathan Taylor. Look, I'll bury the lead here. I see Eagles 28-13. I think they write the ship. But we're going to know right away. I think at the end of the first quarter, where Philly is with that defense and what they're doing. And what, look, the stuff with Jeff Saturday is hocus pocus shit. I don't care about some analyst guy, Jim Mersey, talking about victory laps and how he was right. Dude, one game doesn't make a coach's career. And it's, a, it's one of the more idiotic franchises because of that owner. Another chaotic situation. And you got good players on that football team. It's chaotic in there because the owner is making decisions. Chris Ballard, the general manager, my opinion, is a puppet. I got some good football players in there. But they're never going to go anywhere because they keep, they, they, they keep measuring quarterbacks to Andrew Luck. Dog, you know how many times you, you land on a guy like Andrew Luck? You don't. Appreciate you guys coming aboard. Thank you so much, man. See, I think this has to be a complete collapse by the Eagles, and I just don't see it. They're not going to collapse. This would have – if they get punked by the Colts, dude, that Tennessee Titan team is going to run you over. I think – by the way, I don't think the Colts are going to do it. But you never know who shows up on Sundays. What up, Cody? Matt Ryan is the starting quarterback. He's functional. Okay? He's functional. By the way, Jonathan Taylor was the AFC player of the week. 147 yards versus the Raiders. He's in the top three best backs in the league. He's in that conversation. He's not a bad player. And they got people in the old line that can move. The sticks. No turnovers. The Eagles have to play. How about this? The Eagles have to play a clean game here. And get out. Get back into one column. Get back in that wing column. Just, okay? Rear view. Rear view mirror stuff. 28-13, somewhere in there. Then again... I didn't see, okay, I, I, I didn't see where Washington was going to score more than 17 points this past week. And they went up and did. They shocked me. Okay? The coaches got to not get too fancy. They got to start knowing who they are again. You lost your identity in that Washington game. Okay? You lost your identity in that Washington game. Get back to who you are. Get Jalen more involved in the run game. Let him get out there on third down. I don't want to see him do it every week, but get the offense moving back again, you know? Hey, by the way, Landon Dickerson's got to pick it up. I don't think he played very well this last week against um, Washington. I, I don't think he played well. 
I don't think Sayamalo played well. When you watch the 22, there weren't a lot of good performances in that old line because they were asked to pass protect. That's a run blocking unit. Stick to it, man. That's who you guys are. Say Amalo for the last couple weeks has not played well. Jason Kelsey, this guy is being kept together with like band-aids. Landon Dickerson did not play well, and Malata hasn't played well since the shoulder injury. So it kind of concerns me going into this Colts game. It kind of concerns me. Jerry Jones said they never contacted Sue. Who's telling you that, bro? <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. So you believe everything Jerry Jones says? You believe everything an owner says? Good grief. Sports. I took you for being smarter than that. So the 31st run defense in the National Football League is not trying to get better, and they think they're just going to go with the stiffs they have. Of course they're going to say we didn't reach out to them. They don't want to give Philly any kudos for signing the guy. Since when is Jerry Jones going to go? What a great sign. It's Cowboys and Eagles, my friend. Yeah, because GMs and owners tell the truth. Good grief. Who's telling me that? Other general managers are telling me that. Whatever, guy. Okay. Can the Colts upset the Eagles? Yeah. You put one of those efforts out like you did against Washington and you get knocked off the football, you absolutely can lose this game. Washington's nothing to write home about. Okay? JM says, Jones also said that he knew Parsons was a generational player and wanted him over Sertan. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Thank you, JM. <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> I'm sure. Whatever, guy. Hey, 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 hey. Sports. I don't care if you believe it or not, dude. I seriously, I could care less. <laughs> How do you sue? Eagle said, we're confident in the D-line with the two signings. You know how much of a problem I have with that still? So Jonathan Gannon doesn't have still the talent he needs. And so he's got to run to the personnel office and tell them that we don't have good enough players again. When does that stop? Where, where, when does that stop? Before somebody goes, dude, this is on you to figure it out. How many times? I heard all. I can't tell you how it was so upsetting listening to some people talking about how the Eagles sign these guys and how it was so important to put them in there. And all of a sudden now, Jonathan Gannon is telling you, midpoint of the season, I don't have good enough talent. That guy's, I, I, I don't get it. I can't wait to get Seth on at 530 East. I, I can't. So he, he needs more talent. I thought that was the issue a year ago. Man. How do you sue? Get his ass in there right now. Play him as much as you possibly can play so he gets up to game tempo. I'm not working anybody into anything. I'm putting his ass in there, and I'm going to play him maybe tops 20 plays. Fletcher Cox cannot play 70 plays. He turns into a windmill. This guy's a turnstile. You cannot have him playing 70 plays. He's not a 70-play guy any longer. It's funny, even though you're paying him 14-4, I told you at the beginning of the year, that is a gigantic mistake. Play his ass now. 
Get him in there. See what he can do. You play him on first and second down. I'm not putting him on third and long. I don't need that. By the way, I'm going to talk to you again a little bit here about Hassan Nobody. Dude, seriously. You really think that was worth the investment? The guy gets nine, ten sacks. You know, again, I told you this at the beginning of the year. Okay? He's not going to be worth it. He's not worth it. You brought that guy in for that money for nine sacks? Shit. Dude, he's a non-factor. He sporadically gets sacks. He's a streaky player. You need consistent at the edge. And you can blow him up at the edge, too, by running the ball at him. He is a one-dimensional player. I would have never put that money on that guy. Hassan Reddick was not worth the money, and neither is Fletcher. Those two guys aren't worth the dough. 14th. Does anybody actually think Fletcher Cox would have got $14.5 million on the open market from anybody but Philly? Nobody in their mind would have. He would have been in the same boat that Adami Kinsu was. Or Jadavian Clowney a couple of years ago. Remember when Clowney wanted $20 million? I kept saying this. Why? He's never had double-digit sack years in his entire time since he came out of South Carolina. I'm not paying a guy $20 million who doesn't get to the quarterback enough. Not giving shit to Hassan. He's a marginal player. The reason I say marginal is pretty good pass rusher. He sucks at everything else. He's not a very good tackler. And you can run at him. 6'1", 250. Congratulations. I don't know where you play that. That is not an edge rusher. He is not T.J. Watt. Some of you are going like this, I blame Gannon. You got to have player accountability in there too, my friends. Your two DTs are getting blown up. By the way, how many people think Robert Quinn has been a bust of a sign? I don't. How can the guy get any kind of pass rushing reps when you're getting murdered the last five weeks against the run? I don't need to throw the ball against the Eagles. Plays right into the Colts. First and second down. We're going to know immediately in this game Sunday if they've addressed it. Because if the Colts can win first and second down, it's going to be a long day, man. It's going to be a long day. Quinn out in coverage. Why? Haywood murdered. I wish I still had those stats here. Every week it went up in yards, not only per carry, but yards against your front seven. What up, Maniac? Play Sue and the other kid as much as you possibly can. Get them both 20 reps. Play Fletcher, Fletcher and Hardgrave in there. Rotate him. Get Milton more involved. But you see, I'm saying all this. I can't wait again. I, mean, I know I'm saying this, but I can't wait till we get Seth on because I'm saying all this shit here, man. Gann is going to play soft-ass football. He's going to do exactly what I said yesterday he's going to do, which is nothing. He's not going to blitz on first and second down because he's afraid. That guy comes from a place of fear. You see it every game. Now he's telling you, hey, Eagle fans, you know what he's telling you now? I don't have the guys again. You don't have the guys again? Well, when did that happen? Oh, the last five weeks? Maybe it's your soft-ass defensive front. You know what Dan Quinn does? When you're starting to get blown up, he moves guys around and does first and second down blitzes with his backers. Mr. International, still hyped about yesterday. 
Yesterday's show, Eagles are legit. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have everything moving in the positive direction if you're the Philadelphia Eagles to get to Glendale. Except your coordinator. I swear to you on God's of football. That guy is not a good coach. I don't know what Troy Aikman and Tony Romeo and the rest of these dudes are smoking, but that guy is not good. He has not shown me one re- And everyone's like, well, you know, Sills, they don't give up a lot of, a lot of points. You don't play high-powered offenses. You're not playing teams that put up 35 points and play. You haven't played a decent quarterback since last year. I mean, good night. <laughs> I, I, I love what some people are saying, too. They're all going like this, man. They're going, Sills, up. You got the, the Cowboys never reached out to Sue. Really? You got the shittiest run defense in the NFL, and you didn't reach out to a guy who could help you. That sounds very cowboyish. But then you'll go after Odell Beckham, who will do nothing for you. Congratulations to you. You build the team for TV, not for championships. Remember that in Dallas. Here's a little note for Cowboy fans. They don't build championship teams. They build TV teams. Okay? That's the difference from Jimmy Johnson. To Jerry Jones. They built TV teams. Not chan- You're building a championship team. That's why it's boring. Mr. International, I absolutely hate Gannon. <laughs> Put his head on a spike. William Wallace would love that, my friend. Dude, the Cowboys don't care about winning. They care about TV ratings. 29 million people. Watch them and the shitty Packers play. Congratulations. What does that mean? The Cowboy brand is as big as ever? Congratulations, Jerry. We know that already. Tell me something I don't know. But you explain this to me. Why since 2000 have the Eagles owned you and everyone else in the division? Think about that. Eagles Eagles don't have these... Super high-flying wideouts. You had one when it came to T.O. for one year. And now you got A.J. Rest of them, you never had a 100-catch wideout. I've been telling you that in franchise history. Never a wideout has ever had 100 catches in a year. That's crazy. You're not built that way. William, how you doing, brother? Dan, would you compare Hurts to a guy like Jeff Blake? Jalen's better. Jalen's better. Greg says, Sills, where did Gannon learn his defensive scheme and why does he believe in it so much? It's this new analytics, Greg. Okay? Here's why. These new coordinators, Urban Fryer never had one. Ever. Ever. Here's what they believe with these analytics today. They believe keeping everything underneath because you know why? There's too many rules now, pass interference, all of that. You don't have aggressive playing defensive coordinators any longer. They're bubble defenses. This is the new wave. This is You're not going to see imposing defenses like the Ravens, the 85 Bears. You're not going to see buddies gang green. You're not going to see teams like that any longer. Okay, you're just not. JM, 88 and 86, both over. I said freaking 100 catches, dude. I never said 1,000 yards. 100 catches. Try using your ears. JM, 100 catches. You've never had a wide out in team history. Dude, Listen. Jack says, Sills, your authenticity is rare these days, brother. That's why I watch the show. Jack, I think what you guys have, I think unless something disastrous happens, I totally think you guys are going to Glendale. And now 
with the way we're watching Kansas City and we're watching the Bills not having the ability to run, dude, you know, here, here, here's the thing that I think Nick Sirianni has to get back to. Stop advancing the offense when you don't have to right now. I'm not saying don't get Devontae Smith involved because it's been a month since he's been a factor. Devontae Smith, this last month, has been no factor whatsoever in your offense. And now with Goddard being out, you're going to have to create more offense. Dude, he's a great player. Use him. Okay? Use him. Run the ball, dude. Get back to the... You can run this Colts... Now, the Colts can play the run. Okay? The Colts can play the run. They're good. But don't lose your patience. I thought they got outcoached and lost their patience in Washington. Or playing against Washington at the link. I thought they lost their patience. Run the ball. Can I make this statement to you about Jonathan Gannon? It's not a case of keeping the defense off the field. It's keeping Jonathan Gannon off the field. Try to do that. Keep that guy from getting in the way. Run the ball. Sustain drives. Do all that. Dude, you can't have that guy. That's why I said, again, do me a favor, guys. Okay? Do me a favor here. Make sure you're watching the game in the first quarter. If it's close, it could be a long day. It could be a long one. Keep Gannon off the field. He's he's just not good enough. And let me show you something else here, too. By the way, we're going to look at week 11 of the NFL. It's a great college football game. Seth Joyner, 530 Eastern. I want to show you guys something here. Who do you guys think has been the longest turned or tenured general manager in the NFL? Who's been the longest? I've got nine guys here. Who's been the longest running GM in the NFL right now? Do you guys know? The longest running GM. Howie, he's on the list, believe it or not. Jerry Jones. 33 years. Guy's got three Super Bowls. And that's what he hangs his hat on. Let me tell you this. If Jerry was such a great general manager... If he was such a great general manager, why hasn't he been able to duplicate it like how like Ozzy Newsom has? Or even Howie Roseman? Why hasn't he been able to duplicate what they did back in the late 80s with Jimmy Johnson? Why? Because he's not concerned about winning Super Bowls anymore. He's more concerned about TV games. See, Jerry likes his players being stars and not football players. Because once you pay him, look at look at Dak. Dude, Dak's got a big game this weekend. You got to beat Kirk Cousins, son. You got to beat Kirk Cousins. All the players that Jerry Jones has drafted over the last 33 years, you know they haven't been back to a conference championship game since like the 90s. He's terrible. Belichick is second, 22 years. Six Super Bowl titles. Mickey Loomis, Saints, Super Bowl champion, 20 years. John Schneider, know John very well. Went up there from Tampa. When I was at Tampa, I knew John very well when he was in that organization. John Schneider, 12 years, Seahawks. Number five, Howie Roseman, 12 years, 2010. Super Bowl. 
Les Snead, six, 10 years, Super Bowl. Steve Keim, nine years. Cardinals, 2013. Tom Telesco got outbid by the Eagles. Chargers, 2013. I like Tom a lot. Jason Light, Buccaneers, eight years, Super Bowl. My point is, all these guys here have their own set culture. All these guys here are pretty much, and I'd say Peterson, the guy in Tennessee, is a spectacular general manager. I think the kid DaCosta has a chance. I'm not going to say he's going to be the next Ozzie Newsom in Baltimore, but there's just certain organizations that have a great culture in what they do. My My only issue with Howie and how he builds his team is that he hangs on to his draft choices too long. Jerry, on the other hand, pays him too much. And there lies the problem that you have, not moving off your mistakes quick enough. How he doesn't move off his mistakes quick enough. He'll keep a stiff on his team because he drafted him. Because people in his organization. Patriots don't do that. you got a guy who's not making it happen. Nikhil Harry's a great example of that. They blew him out after two years. He's not good. Goodbye. He was a first-round draft choice. How he would never do that. He ain't doing that. This guy held on to Jalen Rager as much as he possibly could. And you got a bag of fleas in return for the guy. Hey, I mean, that's his. Every one of these guys, Jerry overpays. Belichick, you know what's funny? I heard somebody say Belichick is not a very good evaluator of quarterbacks. Four Belichick quarterbacks are starting this weekend. How's he not a good evaluator of talent? Four people that Bill drafted are starting this weekend. Now, is Mac Jones Tom Brady? No. No. But he's got four starting quarterbacks. That is not a true statement. It's almost as bad as when I hear John DeGannon. He's one of these great guys. Ridiculous. Look, I'm concerned about the tempo of the game against the Colts. Some of you are going, Sills, we're superior to the Colts. You're superior to Washington. So let's ask this then. Let me, let me save this one. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Don't forget, Seth Joyner, 530 Eastern. Do me a favor, Okay. Do you think that that was just something that was going to happen and we're not going to see that again? Or do you think the Eagles are in line to lose a couple more games? Hit the like button. I want to hit on that. Keep it here on the National Football Show. Don't wait until after Thanksgiving for leftovers. It's the new leftover sales event at Jeff D'Ambrosio Destination Downingtown. Jeff must get rid of hundreds of new 2022 vehicles on the lot. Rams, Grand Cherokees, Wranglers. Jeff has them all for less. Jeff has reduced prices and payments to the lowest they've been all year. And Jeff knocks down high interest rates, save thousands more than anywhere else. Plus, get more for any trade or lease return. You always win at Jeff's great selection, best price. Hurry in now. Jeff D'Ambrosio Destination Downingtown. Nobody treats you better. Black Friday sales event. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call.
Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. At Sal's University, our graduates are among the most highly trained in their profession because of our unique emphasis on research, interprofessional collaboration, and early clinical exposure. Learn more about our programs at salis.edu. Welcome back. National Football Show. Appreciate it. Seth Joyner, 530 Eastern. I like what Philly wrote up there. What has Belichick done without Brady? What did Parcells do without Belichick? What do you ever do? Can you tell me? If Bill wasn't his coordinator, what, what has he done? Every single time that Parcells won a Super Bowl, Belichick was the D.C., What's he done without Bill? He didn't win in Dallas. He didn't win in Miami. He didn't win with the Jets. I mean, what did he do with Belichick? Bill's got two championship rings as defensive coordinators in New York. He was also, by the way, an assistant on that team that went to the Super Bowl. They got beat by Brett Favre. After he got fired by Cleveland, Bill brought him on. JM says he turned the Jets around into what? A decent team? Congratulations. Jets are a decent team under Bill. Great. Great. He's had average teams without Belichick as his defensive coordinator. Average at best. Average at best. By the way, here, let me let me see if I'm being unfair here. To Hassan Reddick. <laughs> Holy cow, Joseph. Thank you, man. That's really cool of you. Great show, yes. You move our goalposts. Crazy scenario. Ryan gets hurt. Nick Foles comes in. What do you think? P.S. You can give my wife Romano Romana a shout out. You're the best in the Eagles business. Thank you. Joseph, that is so kind. Romana, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Hopefully you're just as much of a great sports fan as my, my wife. Just so you know, Romana, every time I try to bring up something to my wife, my wife will do this because just so you know, she was the producer of my radio show for 20 years when I first got into the business. So you, you'll, you'll, you'll like this. Um, every time I go, hey, do you know where um, you know O.J. Simpson went to school? She looks at me and goes, I'm not answering that. <laughs> Eagles lose two more games at most. Wow, Mr. International. So you think you're going to have three losses? Yeah. Yeah, three more losses. Three more losses. Joseph, that's really cool of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Really cool. What's up, Will? Let me get on to my boy, Hassan Rick. God, what a sign. You got yourself an all-star team here, man. You think Hassan gets off the bus this weekend? Or is he going to be stuck there? Stuck there in Indy. <laughs> does he get off the bus? Hassan! 
Where are? Oh, where? Oh, where has my Hassan gone? 14 and three sounds incredible. You'll win home field advantage with that. Hey, <laughs> Greg goes like this. Sills, you're on fire yesterday because you're very partial to the defensive tackle position. I really love Adamic and Sue. I think he's been one of the absolutely best football players in the last 10 years. I love his style of play. I love everything about that guy. I love the fact that he's a jackass. I love the fact that he plays with an edge. I love the fact that he's done things in games that give him that, you know, right? Where you think maybe he's a little dirty. I think that Eagle team needs that. I think I think that Eagle team needs a little bit of an attitude. Fletcher's a good dude. This guy here is an ass. This guy here is going to play dirty. I, you need a little of that, don't you? That's one thing I'll say about that. How, tell me if you think this is fair about the Eagle defense. Let me ask you this. You think the Donovan McNabb defense with them guys, Corey Simon, back in the day, you guys think they had a little edge to their – you think there was a little edge to him? There was a little nastiness to him? Do you? That's the Trotter guys, right? You guys think they had a little attitude towards him? There was a little edge? Right? When you played against the Eagles in that Andy Reid run, those guys were tough. Those guys were tough. Dude, I don't even have to go back with the Buddy Ryan guys. Those guys had an identity. Those guys were tough. Played with an identity. What does this team play with? What's the identity of the Eagle defense right now? Can you tell me what it is? Look, I'm not going to say soft. It's not soft. It's getting there. But I'm not going to say soft. Your corners and everybody are very good. Okay, every, 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 everybody's great. Damn, sports, he used the word soft. You think they're soft, dude? Dude, Brian Dawkins was an animal. Dude, the only safety that's better than him is Ed. Okay? The only DP better than him is Ed Reed. Ed Reed, he, and, and, and by the way, when I say that, I say with the greatest respect of Brian Dawkins. Okay? Go back and think about that. What's 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 the at? Jonathan Gannon has not given that defense an at. Dude, I'll tell you what. The Dan Quinn defense, even though they're getting steamrolled, even though they're getting steamrolled, there's some type of attitude. Troy's not better than Ed Reed. Sorry, James. I think Ed's a three-time defensive player of the year. One of the greatest special teams players in the history of the league. Ed Reed's the GOAT, dude. He's better than Ronnie Lott. I, I say this to people. I, I think Ed Reed's the greatest player to ever come out of University of Miami. Guys, I mean, he was a great college player. He was a great college special teams player. And he was an amazing... Bill Belichick said that he thought, and they, they were more nervous about Ed Reed than Ray Lewis. And I think Ray was... I think John's a great player. No disrespect to John. I love John. He's not better than Ed Reed. Malcolm Jenkins, fine ball player, not better than Ed Reed. Dude, his accolades are second to none. Second to none. Dude, 99 yard pick six. Hey, 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 sports, didn't it seem like he did that like all the time? By the way, top of the hour, week 11 of the NFL. I want to get into some of these games. Hey, before I get back into, um, how many losses you guys are looking at here? I want to get back into that a little bit more. Would you guys bench Aaron Rodgers now moving forward? You're three and seven in Green Bay. Do you bench him? Do you bench Rodgers? He's making $50 million a year. Okay, what's the point of playing him? Okay, what's the point of playing him? Do you bench him? I think Atwater's a great player. He's not Ed Reed. You bench him. You bench a $50 million a year guy. I'd bench him too. 
I got to figure out Jordan Love can play. I got to figure that out. Mr. International says, no. Atwater's responsible for most of the CTEs in the Alumni Association. He's one of the best hitters uh, out there. Hey, look, man, if I got a guy, dude, if I had Patrick Mahomes as my quarterback and the Chiefs were three and seven, I'm not playing him. I'm not playing him. The only reason I would play Jalen is because I got to figure out if Jalen's my guy. I think he is. The way that they're acting. Sully, Ed was crazy. Ed, Ed, let, let me, Ed, or Sully, let me throw this at you here. Okay? Ed Reed stats. I mean, Ed Reed, Wikipedia. When you just hear them, they're, they're like insanity. When you hear Ed and you hear the things that he accomplished. I love the guy. I should try to get him on, huh? Super Bowl champion, NFL Defensive Player of the Year, six-time All-Pro, nine-time Pro Bowler, led the NFL in interceptions three times, was on the All-2000 Decade Team, the 100th Anniversary All-Time Team, all-time rookie, was on a national championship, and was on a Super Bowl champion, was the Big East Defensive Player of the Year, was a two-time Consensus Hall of Famer, or two-time Consensus All-American. Dude, he's, he's, I tell Ed this all the time. He's absolutely the best. Would you trade him? Would you trade Aaron Rodgers if you're Green Bay? Trade him to the Bucks. Would you trade him? Trade Aaron Rodgers to the Buccaneers. Or to the Rams. No, you got a deal lined up with Stafford for the next three. Too much salary cap hits. Would you trade Aaron Rodgers? Where are you going with him? By the way, Matt LaFleur last night is getting exposed. His record is insane. I don't think he's a very good coach. Mike Vrabel last night was unbelievable. Who can afford him? Good call, JM. You're right, because then sal salary caps – Get annihilated. Would you trade Aaron Rodgers? You're not going anywhere with a 39-year-old guy. Then again, who would want to? Well, I mean, if you had a ready-made team, what if you're San Francisco? Didn't he play his college ball in the Bay Area? So you put Aaron Rodgers with Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey and Kittle and Trent Williams. He played at Cal. What if you trade him for two years and you trade him back to the Bay Area? They can afford him. They're not paying any quarterback. And you get rid of Garoppolo. You send him somewhere. He has a no trade anyway. Miami? No, I think Miami. I think they're either going Tua or I think they're going Lamar Jackson. Trade him to the Raiders. It'd be a typical Raider move, wouldn't it? They will not trade him in the NFC, Dan. 39? William, you gave me you gave me a first round draft choice for a 39 year old quarterback that you're gonna have one more year tops with, and he's just gonna retire and you're gonna go like this. Okay. Why wouldn't you move him? You're not going anywhere with him. Seattle, one year? I'd rather have Geno. Can you imagine Aaron Rodgers in San Francisco for two years? Yeah, and then he can go to Hate Ashbury, hang out with all the potheads, and sit there, and he can hang out there doing dubs and all that, and eating mushrooms, get his hair, you know, playing the guitar and the band. I think he plays a banjo too. You know, he looked good on the corner of Hate Ashbury, Aaron. You know, and that hair, you know, sitting there smoking and all that, you know, Luo, 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 <laughs> get flowers in his hair. <sighs> Them quarterbacks are all worms. <laughs> <laughs> you see Aaron Rodgers, man, playing there. Hey, Ashbury got flowers in his hair. Oh, those quarterbacks all need to be slapped. <laughs> he looks like a bum. He is a bum. Listening to Grateful Dead, right? Then going over to uh, Golden Gate Park 
where all the homeless guys are. Is that Aaron Rodgers under a tree? Yeah. Wow. Hey, man, can I have your mushroom? <laughs> oh, man. What a toolbox. Hey, did you see what he said, too, after the game last night? This is why you love Jalen. Jalen doesn't talk like this. Yeah. You know, I was, you know, I, I threw a couple of wobbly passes. Dude, you're three and seven. Act like it. Act like there's a sense of urgency. <laughs> I mean, really, dude. That guy just goes through the motions. I think he, he has got to be one of the most hated teammates of all time. Hi, but you know, you know, he's so good. Dude, I'd get rid of that guy. If I'm Green Bay, it's time. Get him out of there. Got to move on, man. I agree, Danny. This is what's making Jalen so, dude, you know what? I can't wait to watch Jalen Hurts this weekend. After watching what I watched last night, dude, didn't it look like the Packers with Aaron Rodgers? They look cold and old. They looked like they had no energy or any kind of fight to them. There was nothing there. I mean, great Vrabel's guys. Who's going to give up a premium pick for Rodgers? He's unpredictable. That's, that's Xander. Yeah, you tell him this. We're going to send you to San Francisco. We're going to send you back home to California. Would this be something you'd be interested in? Dude, look at the talent he's got. He'd have Debo Samuel. He'd have Christian McCaffrey. He'd have a great O-line. He'd have a great running attack. He'd have a spectacular defense. And he'd have Kyle Shanahan. I don't know if I'm San Francisco. Hey, you want Trey Lance? Then someone would go, Sills, they gave up three ones for that guy. <laughs> hey, dude, somebody's going to pay for that. You're going to have to pull a Howie Roseman if you're John Lynch. You understand that. Hey, I screw up. I screw up on Jalen Rager. I'm going to go get A.J. Brown. Hey, I screwed up on Trey Lance. I'm going to go get Aaron Rodgers. It's the only way you save face. It's the only way you save face. Is this if you make a move like Howie would. Because that, Howie would. Oh, God, I love that. Howie would make a move like that. Totally. Please tell me you saw that pass over the middle. He missed the sand. Dude, he was terrible last night. I, I've not seen Aaron Rodgers play that poorly in, in a long, at least 10 years. Brady's going to San Francisco? That's a good call because somebody said something to me. Sills, do you think somebody on a radio station in Baltimore asked me that? You think Brady goes... And stays and plays another year. I don't think you give up your old lady and your family to give up the game. He has a $375 million deal at Fox waiting for him. And now with this crypto thing, I don't know what's on the horizon for him. That crypto thing, he's involved in it. He's Him and Giselle are going to lose a ton of money. And they're being sued. So, I mean, he's going to need some dough, dog. And that, and that Fox deal may retire him. Dude, I mean, that thing, that, that FTX thing. Did you see the dopes that were running that company? Holy shit. They need to call the Krauses on how to run a company. They had like 14-year-olds like going like this. I didn't even do my math. <laughs> You're dealing with billions? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even algebra. I'm going, wow. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Dude, I think they move. I think I'm saying to you, I'm I move him. All right. Do you believe what you saw on Monday? By the way, we're gonna look at week eleven of the NFL. Top of the hour. Seth Joyner is gonna join us 5 30 Eastern. So do you think what happened on a couple days removed from it now? After what you saw against Washington, you think when they play against the Colts this weekend, Sills, how many times have you said it here? This stuff happens all the time to teams. We see it all the time. 
teams end look, look at hey, Chiefs lost to the Colts. Right? That same team that you're playing on Sunday, they beat the Chiefs. It was a pretty good football game, too. I went back and watched it. So do you think, I mean, is this a one-off? I do think you're going to lose three games total for the year. 14-3? and three? That's home field advantage, in my opinion. That's good enough. You'll do it. The only team you have to keep an eyeball out for right now is the Giants. And I still don't buy the Giants. You can't win with four turnovers. It happens. I agree. I think the coaching too, Sydney. I think they're going to be smarter. Now, I'm precluding the defensive coordinator on the other side, but I think the offensive guys are going to be smarter. Xander goes, I got us 14 and three too. One loss to the Giants and one loss. Oh, do I say that? Xander thinks you're going to drop a game to the Cowboys at AT AT&T. Can I tell you, I don't think you're going to lose to the Cowboys. I think you're going to lose to the Titans and one one of those giant games. I don't think you're going to lose to the Cowboys. But I do think you're going to lose to the Titans. I I, I think that Titans game is going to be tougher than you think. I really do. And it, it, that Titans game, is it at Lincoln Financial? Is it, is it at home? I sure hope it is. I think it's at home. Nails is barred from the show, my friend. He can never come on. <laughs> Xander smoking Dak Pack <laughs> was actually three and two of those turnovers were bad circumstances. Also, INT was not. A bad play. I take Washington two out of 15 times. Yes. I agree with that. I think they got you on a really good night, man. It's at the link. Fantastic. Packers and Titans at home. Dude, I never thought I'm going to say this to you, but I think you're going to tear apart that Packers team. I I, I think you're going to rip apart that Packer team. I, I mean, the Titans frighten me more than the Packers now. The Packers are terrible. Dude, not getting a wideout, getting out bid, not getting Brandon Cooks, not getting Claypool from the Steelers, not putting anybody in there for him just doesn't make sense. It's almost like the organization is sabotaging this year so that they can get some pretty good picks. Maybe even I'm talking Packers here. I can't believe it, man. By the way, from what I understand, if I'm not mistaken here, I think Tyler Heineke's a starter this weekend. Is that correct? I think he's the starter this weekend. You keep going with momentum. Hey, Dan, tell Seth Joyner to kick in Howie Roseman's door and tell him he's coaching the Philadelphia Eagle defense. Dude, they don't want guys like Seth Joyner in there stirring the pot like that. That's not what they – hey, they revere Seth. They love Seth. They respect Seth. They don't want to hear Seth. Because Seth would have too many good ideas on how to do things. And it would be contradicting to everything Jonathan Gannon would his play, play and plug defense. All of that. Look, look, here, I can't wait to see how he uses Sue. I cannot wait to see how he uses him. Who cares? We're on to the Colts. James, you're right. Eagles were rusty, two games in 29 days. I've heard people, uh, not just yourself, mention that. I I think they're going to, listen, like I said, I said this to you. I think they're going to win 28-13. We're going to know immediately, though, in the first quarter. And at the end of the first quarter, how this game's going to shape out. Steve, much love to you, too, on this Friday, brother. Can't tell you how I appreciate you guys coming aboard. We're going to hit on week 11. Also, I want to hit on a little bit here with the competition in the NFC as we go into this weekend as well. Um, You see Derrick Henry also? This is a guy you're going to be playing another 1,000 yards now. He's up to 1K. That guy is some football player. All right, hit the like button. We'll hit on week 11. Don't forget Seth Joyner. 
5.30 Eastern time. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. Don't wait.